but that's something you can check and make sure that, that is not leaking. And I open and close it a few times while I'm spraying. Also, I pulled this rod all the way out and I spray the end of that rod. Today I'm going to talk about winterizing your Airstream or any RV for that matter. So there's, you can see the slushy and it's pink. Something is sticking here, but anyway, water can leak out and this thing will crack very easily. Where, where many people fail with their trailers. What I like about it is you can customize it. So this one has 13 adventures on it. Good morning, I want to talk real quick about uh, two things. So leaking window. If you ever notice as you have water coming into your windows, running down when it rains, any of your windows really, uh, look where it's coming from and you may want to go outside and there's three, like these two dots here, there's two where all of your your rails are to open it up. There's two where they lock on each of these where it locks at the bottom. And then you have, depending on the window, three, four across at the top. So that I want you to start there and look and see. Now, these little plastic, all it is is a cap. And you can take something sharp here and you can pop that open. And there's a screw, like there's a Phillips screw right there. So what I wanted to offer you was just check, make sure that they're tight and they will spin in this position there. So you're going to have to open the window up and hold on the back side of it. But that's something you can check and make sure that that is not leaking, um, that that's tight. And if these things ever rip off for some reason, you can replace them. And you can see right in here, I have the screws. Basically, what, one way you can really easy, easily check is if you can grab it and turn it with just your fingers, it's probably too loose. And if you need to tighten it up, you can grab your little small set of pliers, screw on one side, pliers on the other side, and make it happen. Hope this helps uh, for any of you who may think you have a leak in your rig, but it might just be the window. Let's talk about dump station real quick. Uh, I drained my tanks this morning and when they were completely drained and the hose was dry and everything had dripped out of here for quite a long time, probably an hour or so, I let it, let the valves both be open. Uh, quickly, I'm going to go over how I dump my tanks. So I don't put toilet paper down my tanks. I've said that a hundred times, but uh, draining this black tank is much, much easier than when I had, when we used toilet paper. Um, but that's just what we do. We just put it in a trash can beside and it's no issues. We take it out every couple days. Uh, also around here I have heat tape. So if we are in the winter time, I can keep these pipes warm by plugging it into this outlet right here. And it just keeps those pipes warm and keeps them from freezing when we are in super cold weather conditions. It allows me to open and close the valve. Once I have drained the black tank completely and I see nothing else coming out of the other end of the hose, then I turn on my flush and I let it flush until I see clear water coming out. So that's step two. Step one, pull black tank, let drain till nothing comes out. Step two, run fresh water into the black tank uh, flush until I see clear water coming out of the end of that. Then I close the valve and I go inside and I stand there and look at the, th look at the sea, sea level gauge or whatever type of gauge you have and, and get the tank up to about 80%. Once at 80%, I cut the water off and I let it sit for just about five minutes and then I come open the valve again and let it all rush out and let it sit again for a little while. And then I put five, five-ish percent, 10 percent in there or something like that. And then I put my tank treatments inside. Once I am done flushing the black tank, I open the gray tank and let it clean out the hose with all the soapy water that we've used washing dishes and such. So now, uh, this morning I noticed my handles were a little bit hard to push. So, and I realize all of you don't have this option. So for example, our previous rig, the 30 foot uh, international we had, all this was enclosed in a housing and I couldn't really see past this because this, this thing was much longer and all this other stuff was set back some in the way it was built on that rig. And that's the same on many rigs. But with this one, I have easy access to it, so it's very easy to do. But all I do is I take silicone spray and I can spray right at this knife valve here. 
and I open and close it a few times while I'm spraying. Also, I pull this rod all the way out and I spray the end of that rod and then I run it in and out a few times and spray it in the hole all the way around the hole. And I do the same thing for here. So spray the rod and spray the knife valve. And I do it with silicone spray because I don't want to use any petroleum-based lubricant which might deteriorate your um, seal in there. So that's how I do mine and I keep these things lubricated. Again, I know all of you don't have that option, but if you can find some silicone spray with a super extra long straw, maybe you can reach it. Uh, but at least you can spray your handles here. But you got to let this thing get dry first before you pull these handles because there's still always a little bit of residual water that will flow out into this area. So hope this helps. Today I'm going to talk about winterizing your Airstream or any RV for that matter. It's the same process typically on all of them, just the location of the components change. So as you probably are well aware, uh, this is our second Airstream, but our fifth RV. And for me, almost 12 years of full-time living in an RV. So I've seen the gamut of things. I've seen the problems and I've, I've had a number of solutions. Now, I have previously made videos on living in the wintertime in an RV. And I'll put a link to that up here in the top of the screen. And in that video, I talk about this Dyson heater fan. I talk about closing the curtain, uh, how to use propane and save propane and things like that, using maybe a third tank. I've made a couple videos on that, actually. So I may have multiple links here following following each other on all those videos. i got to go back and find them. But today, I'm going to do specifically winterizing with antifreeze. Now, about a year ago, maybe a little more than a year ago, we were down in southern Utah, and I made a video about winterizing with air, um, using an air compressor. The air compressor is a pretty simple process. Now, using antifreeze takes minutes. Uh, using air compressor takes more minutes. Really, the only time I use air now is when we are traveling and I don't have access to antifreeze or buying some is cumbersome or I'm unexpectedly in freezing conditions. And i give you an example. Blair and I were driving through Idaho one time on our way up to Washington State and the temperature started dropping. And we were on whatever, I-15, I'm not sure what road we were on, but I noticed the temperature was dropping and the temperature was not going to go up any higher and it was going to go below freezing. We pulled over into a truck stop. And I pulled out my air compressor because we were in the middle of nowhere and there was no way to purchase any more antifreeze. And I did not expect it to get that cold on that trip. Therefore, I had to resort to a different method. So you hook up your air compressor to the outside city water inlet and you turn on the air compressor and you basically go around to every spigot and you do that until air comes out of all the spigots. The problem with using the type of air compressor I have is it's an on-demand kind of thing. So it pumps as long as there's a pressure there. But... As soon as you open up any of these valves, the pressure goes out and it's not enough really. So you got to let it build up, blow it out, build up, blow it out, build up, blow it out. And it takes quite a while to do that. Whereas antifreeze, as long as your pump's working and you've got battery power, this takes just a few minutes. Now, I'm sitting here underneath my hall closet because typically this is where your water pump is and this is where your uh, winterization valve is. Now, some of you who may have a model that's a few years old, you may not have a winterization valve built into your water pump, but it's a very, very simple thing to do. You need a three-way valve and a piece of tubing, and you can cut your current pipe, and you can put it in there for yourself with some very cheap components from Lowe's. Now, in this show notes down here in the bottom of this video, I'll have a link to our Amazon page, and it'll be specifically a winterization link. Uh, take you to our Amazon page and it'll show you the, the thing that Amazon sells and I'll have the individual parts that you would need in case you just want to buy the individual pieces and do it yourself. It's very, very simple to add into here should you desire to do so. All right, let's get started. Now, if you have the 30 foot, uh, the new 30 foot office or 30 foot bunk, your water pump is a very, very painful place to get to. And the water winterization valve is also a very, very painful place to get to. And I'm sorry for those of you who have it. It is right across, right in front of the bathroom in a little bitty compartment and it's very, very hard to get to. So if you have that model, just know that. For all of you out there, I, I beg you, please look at your owner's manual. In that owner's manual, it's going to show you one, a water diagram, so you know where all your low point drains are and where all the water lines are in the rig. That's important. Two, 
that's going to tell you specifically in there how to winterize with air and how to winterize with antifreeze. Now, what I have here is Prestone antifreeze. I bought this at Walmart. It was on sale today for $4.95, so I purchased it. They also had some other brands there that were on sale for a dollar, uh, which are fine. But the really consider the main consideration you need to have is is this safe for copper tubing? Is this safe for drinking safe and non-toxic and that kind of thing? And does it go to the temperature that you need it to go to? So for example, you're up in Canada somewhere and that's negative 50 degrees, negative 60 degrees, something crazy like that. This will work because it goes down to a negative 100. Some of them go to zero. Some of them go to negative 50. Some of them go to negative 20. Depends on the brand you get. So depending on where you live in the world or where you're storing your rig, that's where you need to consider getting the proper temperature level on your antifreeze. But again, make sure it's non-toxic. Make sure it's safe for copper tubing and all those things. So in here is my winterization valve. I have a, there's some pink fluid still in there from when we winterized it last time. We went out of town a few days ago and um, I had to winterize it, but there's still some fluid in here. But on, this hose is going to go down inside this tank here, pull off the cap, and this cap just serves to keep it from leaking back out whenever it's, whenever you pull, pull it out and store it again. Now down in here, there's going to be a, a three-way valve, and on that three-way valve, the, the handle is in line with the tubing. The handle right here is in line with the tubing now, and I'm going to turn it to be in line with this tubing here that I've got running up into my valve. I can winterize this whole trailer with a gallon of antifreeze. It takes just one gallon, typically on most every Airstream out there, less than a gallon, probably three quarters of a gallon. Now, I will use a little bit more, and I'll show you what I use those parts for. So, tube is inserted. Three-way valve is turned. Show you what happens next. All right, so what I'm going to do, my water pump is turned on. I'm going to go to the cold water first. So cold water. This spigot is farthest away from the water pump. This is the most distant one I have. So this one's going to take the longest to get antifreeze into it. So I'm going to turn it on, and I can watch back there with my hose and make sure it's going to suck out. And I see it sucking through the tube. It's going to get a little bit of air first. So this will eventually turn pink. So there's, you can see the slushy and it's pink. I turn it off so I know the cold is good here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the hot. But before I do the hot, I need to turn off the water heater. I turn off the water heater by pushing the red button inside and the screen goes blank. And I gotta go outside and turn it off out there as well. So now I go to the hot. I turn the hot on. It's gonna go back to clear first. Because it's pumping through the hot water system. And it's pink again. Now, one thing you got to be mindful of is what happened to me. My hose pulled out of the jug some. So I now have pink coming out of this, hot and cold. So this is the most distant one. Now let's go do the bathroom. So right here, the sink, I'm going to go to, to cold first. And this should be fairly quick. Cold, it's already pink. Hot, it's pink. Flush, I see pink in the toilet. Now, because I have the bidet on here, I need to also do it. And I have pink coming out of that. And you can see right there, I'm down to almost three quarters of a tank. Next is our shower. So I get the shower handle. Start with the cold. Pink, hot, pink, off. Now, outside here, when I talked about turning off the water here there's a switch right here so make sure that's turned off and turn it off on the inside or vice versa you have to if you turn it off out here it will definitely not be on inside so turn it off now what you need to do out here is right over here on the side is a high pressure relief valve i just want to pull that till i get just a little bit of pink come out of that which is already pink so 
that's a quick process. Now down underneath here is a drain tube on this rig. So right underneath the water heater, underneath my sink in the bathroom is a valve. And I need to go turn that valve and get pink to come out of right down here. So I'm going to go turn it real quick and let it close back. So right down here in our closet. So this is the water heater, the back side of the water heater. And there's a drain valve for the water heater system. So I also need to make sure some fluid, it's really just going to go from here to here. So I want to make sure that some comes out of that. So that's done. And we'll head back outside and finish the rest. Next thing we have here is our outside shower. So I open that up. Now I keep my outside shower handle removed all the time. So there's no water in here. Because if you leave it hooked up, even with antifreeze, I just, it's something is sticking here. But anyway, water can leak out and this thing will crack very easily. I never use the shower anyway, so I just leave it, leave it undone. But what I want to do is ensure that pink antifreeze comes out of this, both hot and cold. So hot. And cold, and I got pink on both. And I'll wrap this thing back up and put this back away. Now, one thing you may want to be considerate of is when you put the hose back away, please ensure that these are closed and turned off before you lock this back up because some of this very easy to leave it barely open. And we'll close and lock that back. If you wonder about these different locks, I do have a different lock. These are from Air Gear. They're really, really cool. I have a link to Air Gear down below. You can get that same kind of keyed lock for these compartments and for your battery box. So down underneath, somewhere on this side of your rig, typically, it could be on the other side, but these are the low point drains. There's two brass nozzles with a red handle typically. One's for the hot system and one's for the cold system. And you need to turn both those handles until pink comes out of those, which again, there's already fluid in the system, so this should be the last thing and very easy to do and very quick. Now that we're done winterizing the rig with antifreeze, every water line all the way throughout the whole rig, all the low point drains and all the inside spigots have antifreeze running through them. So now it's time to clean up our cysts, clean up our mess. First thing I want to do is turn my handle back where it needs to be going back in line with the water system and while i've got it on my mind there is or should be attached to this hose is a card that tells you which way to turn that valve should you forget but i want to pull this hose out of here i'm gonna let it fly out and let it drain out as much as i can it won't drain all of it it's almost impossible to get it all to come out of here but you can get some of it out so I put the cap back on here, I roll this hose back up, and I store it back inside the water closet here, or the wherever your water pump is, water pump closet. Now, what do I need to do with the remainder of the antifreeze? You see, I use three quarters of a gallon to winterize this rig with. It doesn't take much. Once the first one is done, the rest of them goes very quickly. Now, what I can do with the rest of this is pour a little bit into each of the peach. So at the bottom of each drain is a P trap it's called, and there's a drain valve on it. But what I want, don't want is water in that. I want antifreeze in that. Uh, Cause if there's water in there, it could freeze and expand and crack, but I can pour this into my drain and then I can get antifreeze into my gray and my black tank. Now, what you might want to do with that is go outside Make sure that you have cleaned and drained your tanks and let them sit open for a while so that all the things drain out of them and they're free and clean of all the things. But if I have antifreeze running down and it's right there at the edge, right there at the two knife valves, and I've let it sit, settle in there for a while, so I could pour another half gallon in both my gray and black tank. But I might want to open those valves real quick and shut them real quick to get a little bit of antifreeze wrapped around that. So in case there was any water in that, pipe area because it is exposed and is going to be exposed potentially where you are so that may be a way to keep those things from freezing and cracking as well how do you undo the antifreeze it's the reverse process it's very 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 simple you can hook up to city water or you can fill your tank up which is what i recommend fill your tank up with water fresh clean filtered water fill your fresh water tank up with it turn your water pump back on and they go around to every spigot and just turn them on hot and cold until they're all clear. Let's see how that looks. So cold, 
on. You see how much is in this line because it's very long. So now that water's running clear, I'm gonna go to hot. Now that water's clear, I'm gonna go back to cold again. And hot again, and off. Sink here, cold, very fast, hot, pretty fast. Back and forth a few times, pull it. Drain in my bidet. Now the remainder of the toilet. Back outside here, I'm just gonna do this till it's clear. It should be really, really quick. That's quick. And then turn it back on. So the switch is back on now. I turn my water heater back on. Now this light is on already. The light doesn't go out, but when the screen is lit up, that's how you know it's on. So water heater's back on. All right, I have just winterized and unwinterized the trailer. The whole process of doing both took me about 17 minutes and that's moving the camera around and setting everything up for the video but in reality it takes less than five minutes to do both things com combined so uh, you can get one done or the other done easily going in and out of winter winterization now i i still encourage you all to please look at the manual there's a whole section on winterizing and storing a rig so if you're going to store it for a long period of time and winterize the rig the manual takes you through step by step by step process how to do that. It talks about draining the tanks, leveling the trailer, uh, and then moving it up and down to make sure you get all the water lines clear. It talks about blowing them out with air and using antifreeze, or either it talks about disconnecting the batteries depending on what type of batteries you have, and other precautions you might want to take storing your rig, anytime storing it, but particularly storing it for the winter time. And then it again follows up at the end of that about restoring service after the winter and tells you what steps to go through for that too so um, pretty easy process uh, recommend you do that where where many people fail with their trailers uh, not winterizing in cold climates like you don't act it accidentally gets cold so you're outside city water inlet there's a the flapper valve in there will get water in it and get messed up and freeze pretty easily and expand and crack and break that thing pretty easy. But it's a very simple part to change out. There's four screws and it's a PEX fitting on the back side. And I've seen some comments about the, the line that's supposed to connect to that. It's supposed to be a braided hose. No Airstream that I'm aware of coming out of the factory has the braided hose. It's hooked directly to a 90 degree PEX fitting right there. So uh, if that's something you've seen or read, then it, it's not coming from the factory that way. The other thing is uh, freezing the water pump itself. Other precautions about using air is you may need to prime your water pump after you've had air blown through it because there's a there's a valve in there that sometimes it, it needs to get primed. And the easiest way to prime it in this trailer specifically, but many trailers, is to use the shower hose. So your shower, uh, take the nozzle off your shower hose and then suck air through the shower hose like you're trying to siphon gas out of an old gas tank until you get water to come out and that typically has primed enough water through that pump to let it work and then you can turn it on and do all the things but if you ever turn your water pump on and it sounds like it's working but water is not coming out you may want to try to prime it first and that's something I've had coming out of winterization using air. Last thing I want to talk about is the shirt I'm wearing. Uh, I want to say thank you very much to Tina uh, for sending this out. Uh, she contacted us and sent us a couple shirts. So we have a gray variant here and the blue one that I'm wearing, but they have any color, any size. And I will tell you, the t-shirt material is fantastic. I'm a big fan of this and, and Blair and I are both very um, t-shirt snobs, if you will, because <laughs> we like the certain feel on the shirts and, and the, the, the quality of the material. So uh, this is a very good, very good quality. But what I like about it is you can customize it. So this one has 13 adventures on it. You can have the name of your rig, you can have it say whatever you want to, and if you don't like this specific design or you want the design on the back or some other thing about your shirt, she can help design it for you. And she says she's loved working with folks and getting the design that they're looking for. Group orders are also an option. Endless Tales of Wonder uh, is the shop, and you, she has a Gmail account and all the things. But down in the, the show description here, I'll have a link to 
all of her stuff and exactly the description of the shirt and what she offers. As always, if you have any questions about what we do, how we do, why we do, or something you're unfamiliar with, please feel free to write comments down below. I'll write you back or send us an email via the contact us link on our website. We very much appreciate you and thanks for joining us today and happy adventures everyone.